May I introduce the Bentley S3 Continental, designed by a Norwegian, Wilhelm Koren, and I think you can see some Scandinavian simplicity in the long continuous line that goes from the back of the car right to the front. It was known as the Chinese eye because of the slanting headlights at the front. Perhaps the less said about that the better. But it was designed for the, for the jet age, for the swinging 60s, and of course it's the last coach-built Bentley. That's a Bentley built on a chassis from Crewe and a coach-built body from Park Ward. And of course, after this, luxury cars tend to be made just like mass-produced cars. And this is one of only 75 in the world. The engine in the Continental is the recently introduced all-aluminium V8, described by Rolls and Bentley as uh, of adequate power. In fact, it had about 200 brake horsepower. The Continentals had a higher compression ratio, larger carburettors, and higher gearing. They were designed for transcontinental touring. These cars were built for owners who wanted to drive their cars, rather than leave that job to the chauffeur. In the 1960s, the Bentley S3 Continental was the epitome of style and luxury. The Rolls-Royce version of this car, also built by Mulliner Park Ward, featured prominently in the 1966 film Blow Up, starring David Hemmings and Vanessa Redgrave. As you can see, it's the same car with a different badge. Rolling Stone, Keith Richards famously owned a Continental and used it to drive all the way to Morocco with his girlfriend and model Anita Pallenberg. At that time, this car really was the bee's knees. But what about today? Has the appeal of this car lasted? And do the modern day fashion conscious still think it's still cool? Well, I headed to the trendiest part of London, Shoreditch, and to Spitalfields Market to meet some self-styled fashionistas. I started by asking bespoke tailor Joshua Kane if he thought luxury like the Bentley S3 Continental was still relevant. 100%, 110%. I mean, we, we even to your generation. I mean, because people it, it, say that your generation doesn't really want to own a car. Yeah, and I you and only I want think, to rent one. And I think I think that that is true. But then there, there's people who are my generation. I'm, I'm 31. That you know aspire to the, to the classics. But then I'm always looking forward. You know, modernity, new new ways of doing beautiful old things and keeping them current. You know, you see people walking past and stopping, wanting to take pictures they'll probably never look at that picture again or maybe they'll go for dinner and be and say I saw this beautiful car this evening in Spitalfields and then here it is and that's what keeps it modern is is, is young people walking past still want to look at it and talk about it and then be excited by it I think they're really really beautiful they just epitomize luxury beauty um, streamlined you know, it was designed by a Norwegian. Can yeah. you see any sort of Scandinavian Yeah, influence? I can see Scandinavian design, the way it's quite light, but then the lines are very clean. In an age of Uber, yeah. why on earth would you own a car like this? Because for the experience of driving it, I think obviously driving this would be like nothing other. The problem with modern cars is that they're trying to be impressive. I think they're really, really trying to be like different and things like that. And they, they, gro they grope for things like being bright yellow or being loud or being really, really obtrusive. Whereas this kind of car, it doesn't fade into the background by any means, but it sits there and just kind of, it waits for everyone else to come to it rather than flying down Sloan Street at a million miles an hour. This kind of car is it's very, very elegant and very, very it's like kind of respectable, I think is the word I'd use for it. And I'd say it's absolutely beautiful. To really show off the luxury of the Bentley S3 Continental to these guys, I decided I simply had to take them for a spin and let them experience the drive firsthand from the back seat. So I played chauffeur and I whisked Joshua, Oliver and their friend to the Savoy Hotel for their night out on the town. 
Please describe to me the experience of driving in this car. You know what? Okay, I'm going to go first because I'm in the middle. Um, getting in, mm -hmm. small, similar to potholing. Uh, <laughs> but while sat now in the back, very, very comfortable. The sort yeah. of the angle of the seat yeah. leant back. I am comfortable. Yeah. You know what? I'm quite surprised. There's been not. Enough yeah, we're, we're, people being staring yeah, at Yeah, but we yeah. are turning a lot of heads. We've had a, yeah. Now we're on a busier we've a, there's, street. There's yeah. been a few waves. Has that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't been looking because it looks like we're in a toy car, car yeah. which yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, a matchbox car. <laughs> It, it will do 115 miles an hour, actually. Really? So, Shall and, we? And, and for 90, well, we weren't <laughs> well, here, but, open, open but, then. but 1963, <laughs> you know, that was regarded as uh, almost spaceship speed, really. Yeah. Are we all right? We're all right in a bus lane I'll after 7 o'clock. Uh, I think, imagine. well, we're bigger than most buses, I so know. I'm sure no one's going <laughs> to push us the other way. Yeah. With the chap safely delivered, it was time to take the Bentley out into its natural habitat. From the moment I laid eyes on this car, I wanted to drive it, alone, around the beautiful nighttime streets of London. It's very interesting how these cars were made, because of course the, the chassis was built in crew. It was the same chassis that uh, the Bentley and the Rolls had at the time. And it was a, a very stiff box section chassis in a Z shape. And on that was put the Park Ward body. Now Park Ward was in Willsdale in North London. And at, at the height of their construction method, there was 600 craftsmen building these bodies. Park Ward patented the lightweight steel construction method, which in coach building terms, replace the wood with steel. Of course, the car is panelled in aluminium. A lovely detail was the dust and draught exclusion, which was a patented method again of having a rubber seal and the door absolutely sealing to stop dust and draught from getting inside the cockpit. And what that method of construction, coach built construction, adds up to is a unique driving experience. The body is mounted on what were called silent block shock absorbers, big rubber pads that protected the body of the car from the chassis. So what you have is a unique driving experience. It's, it's almost like being in another dimension, not part of the real world. You're, you're in your own world, a very comfortable, very cosseting, very luxurious world. experience of this car is very special indeed. There's this wonderful glass area. I mean, you can see so much more than in a modern car. And yet, you're isolated from that, that view, that wonderful, beautiful vista that you've got. It's, it's a fabulous experience. Of course, the engine's almost silent. There's no wind noise. There's no creaks or rattles. And for a car built in 1963, that's pretty remarkable. But you've also got this wonderful view. You've got this incredible way of looking out of the car. You've got masses of glass. It's like almost being in a, in a conservatory. And yet that view is slightly distant because there's no noise. So it's just a wonderful experience. It's not a sports car, but by God, it's luxurious.